Well, hello there, humans, bees, earth, things, you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bushkrin. Today's video is about the VK4502B. I've been grinding this line. I really enjoyed the Tiger P. I had an incredible run in the 4502A, which I was completely not expecting, and I found this tank to be very solid, the 4502B. And I want to talk a little bit about it because I think it's... There's something to be said for grinding tanks that are proper heavy tanks if you want to just not have to muck around too much. There's a video I've got coming out on the Object 140, and I really love the new Object 140, but it it's rammed home to me the idea that there are certain tanks that are just so much better when platooned. And the reason for that is the, the 140 struggles to hold an area because it's got such a poor armor profile and it relies on DPM. And when you don't have armor and you rely on DPM to win, then you become very susceptible to trades. People that aren't very good at the game will just roll up to you and try and kill you, especially if you're a YouTuber. And that can be very frustrating. Running a tank like the 4502B, and I know it's taken me 90 seconds to get here, is good because this is a tank that can just hold a line and if you're in blitz being able to hold a line is one of the most important things for a, you're looking for in a team um you find a lot of tanks like you'll see games where you'll roll into a game and there'll be a bunch of french heavy tanks and you're like well no one is holding that line no one is going to go to false creek and hold that cap at sea no one is going to you know, just eat some shots, have a big hit point pool and a strong armor profile and and push the team forward. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're pushing the team forward. You can see on my right side, there's a Leopard PTA. Like it's, it's one of the worst tanks in the world for trying to hold a line, the Leopard PTA. It's exactly the same thing as the uh, good old Object 140 I was talking about, where it's all DPM and no armor. And... The PTA's got a stock gun, but I'm pushing our team through the line because it's a tier 9 game and this is a strong tier 9 heavy tank. Is it OP? No, but I, I, I found this thing won exceptionally well in platoon because what it can do is side scrape till the cows come home. Our rear mounted turrets are renowned for being good for side scraping. They let you set up long shallow angles of objects uh, and the VK45 line once you get to tier 9 and tier 10 is all about utilizing what is a remarkably strong upper glacis and lower glacis combo it gets crazy obviously on the uh, VK7201 to and you can see the angles that I take here how far away I am and how easy it is to side scrape and obviously we've pushed through their team and we're continuing to be the uh point man here but it, it's a remarkably good team tank there are a lot of tanks that are not great outside of platoon but are very very good in platoon and this is a tank that is more even keeled throughout um it is a tank that you can grind solo uh, and obviously that doesn't mean like i get people come into the comments and they're like oh this is ridiculous you get special matchmaking or special teams or whatever no like you're going to run into situations where you can't win. And that's all there is to it. And then it's up to you. And heavy tanks, by their very definition, because they've got low DPM, um, once you get surrounded by two or three different vehicles, it can be exceptionally difficult if they get angles on you to win the game. Let's have a look at that armor profile while we think about this as well. Because obviously armor is everything on a heavy tank. And the uh, 4502B is nothing if not a genuine heavy. So the actual armor profile of the 4502B is very strong, but it's not an impervious armor profile. Um, if you run, say, a Conqueror against this tank and you run APCR, you can see that even if you hide that lower glacis, there are lots of areas around the gun that can be panned. In fact, firing directly at the gun um, either side of the gun is your best bet. Even if you angle this heavily to get that gun, uh, that turret facing 
actually clear it from being pinnable, you have to expose huge tracts of land on the side of your turret. And your hatch is always going to be a problem. It's not really a big issue because you want to be side scraping behind cover, behind hard cover. And even when you're not, you want to be face hugging. You're going to see some of that in this video. Well, thank you for that armor breakdown, Studio Bushka. Now, back to the 4502B in action. And I'm going to show you this second game because this is really where you want to be. Uh, it's a tank that, like most Tier 9 tanks, can struggle against Tier 10 vehicles. And so when you get the opportunity to be in a Tier 9 game, you need to be vigorous with it. You need to take it to the front line. You do not want to be the tank that is hanging back, being cautious in tier nine games. You've got the kind of armor profile that against same tier heavies who use premium ammo and get you in the open can be exploited, but that's a very narrow group. And if you can get a good strong toehold into the middle of the map or the, uh, or the one line, as I like to call the heavy line, then you can really change things about. And this this game is a testament to how when you are up against lower tier or same tier opponents, you can do remarkable things in the 4502B. Uh, it's very boxy. Look, I'll be the first to admit that it is not a pretty tank. And I love this angle for the 4502B because I'm watching the minimap and I'm saying there's three heavies. And... Pretty much everything is is over on the far flank, the A-cap, or middle of the map here with me. Surely I can get across and maybe do some things here. And that's when we obviously realize, bugger, there's a tank on our right. Uh, but how do, we, how do we put some impact in here? So I'm going to turn my turret towards that CC over there. Uh, and I'm going to angle it away. And then I'm going to drive across the back end of the map and get down below that ridge line. Now you saw, I didn't just drive left. I angled my tank pretty heavily and I'm trying to get it across here so that I can face hug this fixer or at least force him into some really tough situations. And uh, the gun performing there, it's not a great gun. You've got a 460 al alpha gun, which is great. And that's what you want to be using it for, Pika Boom. But you'd much rather have 600 or 500. The more alpha damage you can get on a Pika Boom tank like this that side scrapes and then pops out, the better off you're going to be. You can see how I came to this side here rather than go to the far right. And that's because that means these guys can't just push up and get shots into my ass as easily. And unfortunately, that WZ went a little too aggressively to that corner, even though I had spotted that CC earlier. And this has left me in a pretty much untenable position. I have one, two, three, four tanks over here. And there's just me and another TD. He is going to play a yeoman's role. I think that's a CC on our team on the right over there. There's a nice bounce off the top. You can see angling my tank is great. But you can't angle to multiple targets at once with these big flat German sides. And I'm trying just to get little bits and pieces here. Uh, and here comes the 53 TP. And this is absolutely key. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Where you want to be using this armor profile. And you want to be making life difficult for these lower tier and same tier opponents. I am using this little rise here to try and keep my lower glaciers changing and making it hard to pin. And then when I can, I'm going to put as much of my nose into that TD as possible. I also didn't go down into the water. Once you go in the water, you lose an absolute bucket load of mobility. And you don't want to be the tank that's in the water. I'm jacking up. I'm worried about the fixer. Uh, I'm very worried about that fixer. Uh, he was behind me, and I've kind of lost track of where he is, so... I'm going to hit the back deck here. Lovely. And this looks grim, right? It's 2v5. It's all over. But this is where your face hugging and your angling really have to come into the fore. He can't see my lower glacis there. And the sides of this tank are absolutely ginormously hard to pin for the same tier and lower tier heavies when they're angled at all. And that 53 TP is in a less than favorable position. I'm using the sides of the CC in front of me to start scraping here as we back it up. And now we've got three tanks on us, but we've got that lower glacis hidden to all but the tier eight. Oh, over there. There we big trouble. 
Our CC comes rolling in. Our tier 8 TD comes rolling in and starts putting the herd on. And that's it. Just a wonderfully versatile big heavy. Take it to the front line. Do good things with it. Make them feel ya. And that's 3k blocked plus, plus and a whole arseload of damage as well. Great tank. Very reliable. Very solid. Very rugged and a really enjoyable grind. And the reward at the end of it, the VK7201, is one of the most strong pound-for-pound -pound heavies in the game right now. Hope you enjoyed that little look at what is a bit of an unsung hero of, uh, of mine, the VK4502B. Get it while it's hot. Until next time, look after yourselves, boys and girls, and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.